Hello everyone. So I just recently completed a full playthrough of the PC version of the new Thief, and I wanted to collect my thoughts about it in one video. This video. Is the new Thief a good Thief game? Where does it sit in the series? Is it a good stealth game? Is it a good PC port? Those are the questions that I hope to be able to answer today. This is, I suppose, the closest thing I've ever gotten to doing a review. Although I wouldn't call it a review. I'm also not going to be spoiling anything major, just minor spoilers at most, so... If you haven't played the game before and you're worried about spoilers, uh, don't worry, I'm not going to ruin it. Okay, so my overall feelings of this game... is that... It's a mess. It's... it's got some things that are really good about it. Mostly technical things that I like, and it's got some things that are really bad, but let's dig, let's dig into them, but first, let me mention one of the things that's actually really good about it, and that's the port. The PC port is exceptional. It really is. They're, they have put an amazing amount of options into the game. So many. Hold on, graphics, here we go. Yeah, there are a lot of options. You can even customize the field of view, which is awesome, and I highly recommend turning it up from the default of... What is the default? I think the default's 90. Definitely recommend turning it up. Yeah, there's just an exceptional amount of options. They've done a great job with this. And the game runs great, and it looks great. And everything is customizable to a really great degree. So they've done an exceptional job with the PC port. So that's one of the things they've done well. But, one of the things they have not done well is the beginning of the game. And also the end. Basically, the beginning of the game sucks. It really sucks. It's a horrible introduction to the game. Because it doesn't have any of the... any of the options, any of the choice that makes it so fun. It's... you're just railroaded down this horrible tutorial kind of thing. So let me show you what I mean about the beginning of the game, and it'll also show off nicely how horrible the story in the game is as well. So let's make a new game. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it does have a lot of options, including the difficulty. Rogue, Thief, and Master, but let's go for Custom, which allows you to set the base difficulty as well as a bunch of modifiers. So this is something that's actually really cool. As you might have heard, before this game came out, there were a lot of complaints about it being too easy and giving you, just handing you too much stuff on a silver platter. And they've done a really good job at making sure that that stuff can be turned off. So first thing I'll say is that this game is way too easy to begin with. If you just leave it on the default difficulty of Thief, a normal balance for accomplished thieves who like a little risk with their reward. Don't. Unless you're really bad with stealth games, I really don't recommend going with the default difficulty. It is incredibly... It would be incredibly easy. I really recommend going for master difficulty. It sounds like it's going to be horribly hard, but it's really not. The game is just way too easy by default. Okay, and then there's all of these options that you can force onto your playthrough. Chapter saves only, no focus. I'll go into what focus is a little bit later. All sorts of stuff. When I played through it, the only thing I did was I turned off the reticle. Just a simple little tweak. And there's some more customization options for this, but I'll show you that. That's access through the options menu instead of the custom settings when you make a new game, so I'll show you that in a minute, but let's begin. So this will nicely show off how horrible the beginning of the game is, and how horrible the story is. Ugh, the story. Dear God. There's one thing this city's taught me. You can put a price on anything. Secrets, reputations, a life. And trust? If you have to ask, you can't afford it. But then I suppose none of that matters when you're me. After all, when did I ever pay for anything? All right, here you go, the prologue. 
Okay. So the problem with the beginning of the game is that it gives you almost no... no options in what you do. It just railroads you down one pathway. It's the kind of tutorial that just... well, <laughs> here's a good example. I can't sprint. I can't sprint yet because the game hasn't introduced the ability to sprint, so they just disable it. Yes, it's one of those tutorials where they just lop off functionality until they introduce it. You have to play by their rules. It's freaking horrible. Yoink. And that continues for quite a while. Probably, depends how long it takes you, of course, but maybe a half hour or so is just this crap. It's really frustrating. It's, it's a terrible introduction to the game, because that's not what makes Thief special. The greatest thing about Thief is doing things your way. Your own personal way, coming up with your own solutions to a situation, but in this case, it's just, it's totally linear. Okay, so let me show some of the other customization options, by the way. Stuff that is just in the game and HUD. Okay. So, by default, I believe most of this stuff is on, by default. And most of it, I highly recommend turning off. So, navigation prompts. Yeah, what the hell, let's just turn it all on. Minimap. Rotation, sure. Object highlights, loot, glint. Okay, so if you turn that on, if you turn on all this stuff, the game tells you where to go, and makes all the loot ridiculously glinty. As you can see. It's really silly. Press space to climb low obstacles. Thank you. Probably couldn't do that before you introduced it to me. So it's just way too easy to find loot by default. And the game just holds your hand. You know, it's, it's like it shines a light at every piece of loot. It's like there's a glowing neon sign above it saying, Look, loot! Pick it up! Pick up loot! Yeah, loot! Pick it up! It's like, Jesus Christ, come on, game. It's Even with most of this off, it's still pretty damn easy to find loot. Oh god, what did I have off? Yeah, I don't know. I'll leave it there. So I recommend turning a lot of that off. And once again, returning to the hand-holding part of the game. You can't fall off. In, in a lot of spots, you just can't fall off. This is one of them. You walk to the side, you just hit an invisible wall. So any tension that could possibly exist from being up high is made irrelevant by the fact that you can't fall off. There's no danger. I'm in no danger of falling whatsoever here. Which is really silly. Let's open this up. Just going to show a little bit more of the prologue before I delve into further into the game. Sudden movements near birds will disturb them. Mm -hmm. Someone's a bird lover. That painting's more my taste. I should take a closer look. Of course, my movements can't be too sudden because I still can't sprint because the game's decided it doesn't want me to. This is one of the actually pretty cool mini games. Looking for a hidden switch behind the painting. There we go. And the lockpicking mini game, which is also I think pretty good. It's an enjoyable little mini game. No problem with that. Just move it around until it lights up and then press E on each pin. Pretty simple. What the Well they do call the rooftops the thieves high. Okay, and this is where that's not who I think it is. This is where the horrible story is introduced. Ah, uh, yes, and here's another problem that the game has. Namely, the fact that rope arrows, which you might remember from the first two thieves, were freaking amazing. Probably some of the most fun items in the game. Oh, look at that. I guess with all the stuff I have on in the HUD, it highlights where I can shoot the rope arrow. Look at that. Hmm. Yeah, big problem with the rope arrow is that you can only shoot it at places they tell you you can. You can't just shoot it, like, I mean, look at this, there's so much wood around here. 
In the old Thieves, this would look like a playground. Just think of all the places you could put rope arrows. Think of all the strange places you can get to. But, nope. You can only put it where they allow you to. So the only place I can put this arrow is right there. That's it. It takes away pretty much all of the fun of the rope arrows. It's no longer special. It's really lame. I hate it. Here we go. Are you ready for the horrible story? Cutscene. Aaron. Of course it is. Care to make a little more noise next time? How else would you know it was me? Basso did tell you we were working together on this, right? Well, I showed up, so what do you think? <laughs> I think you haven't changed a bit. Come on, it'll be just like old times. And now I can sprint because the game wants me to. So this is the beginning of the game. Functionality is just given to you and you can't you couldn't do it before until they actually give it to you and it's filled with cutscenes and a horrible story and well it's filled with Aaron who is just ugh, her character is basically a she's basically like a rebellious teenager that Garrett has to deal with it's unbelievably obnoxious another cutscene enjoy glad you could make it did you pick that route because it was fast, or because he thought it'd be fun? Can it be both? Come on, let's get Basso his commission. Light gem, thank you. And yeah, so this is how it goes for maybe a half hour or so. Are you going to use any of those shadows, Lady Lamplight? I was just scouting ahead. I know you always like to go first. And it goes on and on. So this is the horrible beginning of the game beating you over the head with linearity. It's a terrible tutorial, basically. That's all it is. Uh, but the game does open up, and it actually gets a lot more fun, so let me skip to later on in the game. Alright, this is later on in the game, and this is your home. In the clock tower. So at this point, the game opens up a lot more. Once you first reach your home, it pretty much opens up at that point, where you can explore the city and you can do client jobs and things like that so it's a lot more open world it's it gets much much better this is the best part of the game is in between the beginning and the end is the best part of the game so we actually have some freedom and they've actually done something very cool here with your with your home and that's collectibles now I'm not normally very much into collectibles you can see my collection here, it's... it's okay, <laughs> a lot of empty spots. I have gotten most of the paintings, though. The plaques that I've gotten and whatnot. And this is actually really cool, because this actually addresses one of the problems that all of the Thief games has had for me. All of them. All previous three Thief games had this problem. And this addresses it actually pretty well. And that problem is that it feels... like what you're doing is kind of pointless. That's a problem I've had with the Thief series, is that I'm stealing things, I'm getting money, but what do I actually do with the money? What do I do with the stuff that I steal? And this actually helps address that a lot, because it adds some... It makes it feel like you're accomplishing something. Because I can actually see what I've done. Like, these, these are plaques that I've actually stolen. I went out, I found these plaques, and I took them, and now they're in my collection. Same with these paintings, same with all these bits of jewelry. So you actually go out there, you take stuff, and you get to put it into your collection, which is really cool. It adds a nice sense of accomplishment to what you're actually doing. Which I really like, so props off, you know, hats off to them for that. I really like it. So let's go outside. So at this point, you can... Well, do whatever you want. You can go to the next official story mission, or you can start doing client jobs, or just looking around for loot in general. It's totally up up to you. And is an old it's been abandoned for as long as people can 
And again, this is the best part of the game. Because you can do what you want. This entire place. I mean, just look at it. It's pretty damn large. And this is just one spot, by the way. This isn't the entire map. You can go to... Where am I? I know I can go to South Quarter and... Maybe somewhere else, too? But yes, there's more maps than just this one. And these are all places where you can buy stuff. And I don't have many quests at the moment, but here's one quest, for example. Steal Lady Christina's Testament. Something to do with Ector. What is that quest there? Not sure. But yeah, these are all different quests you can do. You can pick them up from people that give you quests. Go talk to Basso and pick up a bunch from him. I don't know what the hell I just hit. But yeah, it's the best part of the game. Because you actually have freedom. It's pretty wonderful. I like it. But... It's certainly not perfect. Even though this is the best part of the game, it still has a lot of problems. So, let me start... A mission. Actually, before I start a mission, let me show you one of the other good things about this game. Oh my god. I'm making a lot of noise. Okay, another great thing about this game is how damn good it looks. It's... it's a beautiful game. It really is. Ooh, there's a plaque that I never grabbed before. I'll take that. So that'll add it to my collection at home. Good find. Hmm, secret behind it, too. Yeah, it's a freaking good-looking game. It's it's a great port. Like I said, tons of options. It runs great, and it looks great. The amount of detail that they put into the environment is really extraordinary. And the lighting, in particular, is exceptional. So let me show you some of the environmental detail. There's not a lot here. It's pretty bare right here. Some guards I gotta get past. Okay, here, this is a good example. Yeah. Just look at all the detail here. Just so much crap. <laughs> so much crap in the envir- Ew. I'm worried somebody just spit on my head. Yeah, there's so much crap in the environment. Just reeds and the, the wet, dirty ground, piles of leaves and wheels and barrels and flies and like fog and smoke and water and light shafts the amount of detail that's in the environment is really extraordinary they've done a great job with it there's just so much detail dead plants i mean i'm in a i'm in a sick city this is the messed up city and it looks messed up and looks like it's dying It's really a great looking game. Like a dog in a cage, also, they've done a lot of really cool work with body awareness. So a lot of games... In a lot of games, you can't see yourself. You look down and you don't see your feet. You're just a floating camera. Maybe you see your hands. Maybe it's a first person shooter and you see your hands on the gun. But if you look down, you don't see your feet pretty common. In fact, I'd say it's pretty rare to actually be able to see your full body. But you can. And it looks spectacular. I think it's actually fairly difficult to make the player feel like they're not just a floating camera. Because that's often what you are, literally. It's just a floating camera in space. And to put all the work into all of the animations so that you can actually look at your body at any point and have it look correct? I, th I think that takes a lot of work. And they've done a brilliant job with it. Just all of the animation work. It goes super slow. You can look at your hands. There's some other really cool stuff. Um, let me get up. Okay, there's this. If you walk forwards towards a railing, you actually look over it. Like that. It's really freaking cool. They put a lot of work into it. And it really makes me feel like I'm actually a person. You know, I actually have a body. I like it. Yeah. 
Another thing they've done, which actually took me a while to notice this, but if you're sprinting around... you love this. The Blacktops tried to evict Mortimer. Now, oh god, please be quiet. I wouldn't take. Of course, he went off get, on get, them, so no, they beat stop. The stop talking. Nope. He had it coming. And then they pitched him in a car. He wasn't even dead. Okay, they stopped. Yeah, another cool thing I didn't even notice for a while is that... Oh my god! Who's going to clean up after these stinking riots? I'm not staying around to find out. Maybe we can slip out of the city. I hear Blackbrook's night. Can I turn off? Can I turn off voice? There, Jesus Christ, shut up. <laughs> yes, if you're sprinting around and you turn to the side, you can actually see that your view actually tilts with the direction that you're moving. I'm not sure if you can notice it. But your head is actually tilting. It's little details like that that really adds to the sense of feeling like you're actually a person moving in the environment. And it's super cool. So again, most of what I like about this game is really just technical. Like, it runs great, it looks great, and there's lots of fine little details like that. None of it's vital to the gameplay. Which is why this game is kind of a mess, because the most important stuff is actually not very good. But a lot of the stuff kind of surrounding the important stuff, just the movement and the sense of place, is, is uh, really well done. So I don't want to, you know, talk too bad about this game. It does a lot of things right. Well, maybe not a lot of things. It does quite a few things, right? Okay, let's move on to a mission. Alright, so here's one of the client jobs. That is, it's an optional job that you don't have to do. It's called The Bank Heist. I actually think it might be part of some pre-order DLC bullshit. Meaning if you don't pre-order this game, I mean, it's already out, so you can't. You might not actually get it. So I don't know if you can actually play this. But it's actually one of the strongest, ironically, because it's something that a lot of people might not even get to experience, but ironically, it's actually one of the best client jobs in the entire game, from what I've played so far, which is... I've played a fair amount of the client jobs, I stopped doing them after a while because they got too dull, but I've played quite a few of them, and this is actually, I think, my favorite. So let's play a little bit of it, and you can see how this is highlighted. So again, that's the HUD crap, which thankfully they've made an option. Turn off navigation prompts. Turn off the waypoint markers. Yes, please. So that should... There we go. So what was it? it was... Yeah, it's object highlight. So if you turn that crap off, it gets a lot more interesting. Okay, so Machines let's... don't distract as easily as people. I should be careful. Garrett's referring to the camera over there. So yes, this is one of the best client jobs in the game. So let's show you a bit of the gameplay. Keep in mind, this is on master difficulty. Waiting for the camera to look away. There we go. So that's the swoop maneuver, by the way. Activated with the space key. You may have heard that this game doesn't have jump, which is, well, it's not quite true. It does have a jump, but it doesn't have a jump that... You can't jump wherever you want. It's a context-sensitive jump, which is freaking horrible. So it's, it's activated with space. Space will... If you're just walking around like this, space will do the swoop maneuver. If you're up on something, if you're next to something you can climb onto, then space will instead climb onto it, like this. Or if you can jump, it will jump. So it's completely context sensitive, and, well, the lack of a jump blows. It's, it's crap. It's ridiculous. So sort of a philosophy thing they seem to have, sort of approach that they've taken to this game is to refine everything down to the point where they know exactly where the player could ever possibly go. And I kind of get that, because the more freedom you give to the player, the more possibility of bugs or the player getting themselves in, stuck in a very strange or awkward position. But the bad effect of that is that it makes everything, well, not as special. Because no longer are you just finding your own way, but instead you're going down a pathway that has been perfectly 
just perfectly polished and laid at your feet by the game designers. So you end up with a very smooth experience, but you also, but you also end up with a very bland experience, which sucks. So for example, here's my rope arrow. Where could I put the rope arrow? Don't even think about it. There's no point in thinking. Why even use your brain? You can only put it in one spot. Right there. You can only put it where they tell you you can put it. See that wooden structure over there? Right next to it? Think. Huh. It's, it's a rope arrow. Maybe I could put it into there. Nope. Because they didn't tell you you can. You can only put it into those things. And here's the focus mode, by the way. Which highlights anything you can interact with. So anything you can shoot an arrow into, uh, you know, any loot will be highlighted. Any secret pathways, for example, will also be highlighted. So yeah, that's why I also recommend turning off focus. Because it just makes everything too damn easy. See, this could have been cool. Using a rope arrow to get inside of a bank for a bank heist. That's what this mission is, by the way, bank heist. It could have been cool. And it's kind of cool, but it's just not the same as figuring it out on your own. It, it doesn't feel like I've really done anything special whatsoever. Because I'm just doing what they've predetermined me to be able to do. I found a scrap of paper with some numbers on it. I think it might be the vault combination. It must be. I hope you didn't just leave it anywhere. Of course not. I put it in one of the lockers. Notice the awkward pauses in between them talking. They did the exact same thing last time I played this, so that's not just a random bug. That's just how they talk. There's like a five second pause in between replies. Which one? I can't remember. I wrote it down. It's in my pocket. Are you going to leave any time soon? Tell Mrs. Maunders. She handles all vault security. Gods to grave holes. I do believe they leave at some point. Okay, so one major change that they made over the previous... Uh, over the original two thieves, thank you for leaving finally. Tough times. Is that sound is, is much less important than it was. Sound used to be extremely important. This floor here, in the original Thieves, would Freezing. would scare the hell out of you. If I saw this floor, I would go, oh my god, this is going to be horrible. You know why? Because it's hard. Hard floors make a lot of noise. They go tick-tack when you walk across it. I need to rest. Sound was uh, a major consideration, and you had to be very careful with how fast you walked across it. But in this game, sound is even on master difficulty is extremely unimportant. I'll be glad when this is all over. As long as you're in uh, when it comes to human beings, as long as you're crouched like this. As long as you're crouched and you're not walking across glass or water. I'll be glad when this is all over. They will never hear you. Even if you're right behind them, they will never hear you. You are completely inaudible to them. As long as you're crouched, and as long as you're not walking over glass or water. Maybe I'll sleep tonight. <clears throat> Let's go downstairs. Start. All right. Well, that guy's not going to see me. Oh, there's a camera. Oh, I'd welcome some warm coffee. The guy in here might see me. Nope. So again, in the old thieves, you would be scared here. You might need to use moss arrows and whatnot. You have to be very careful. But in this case, my sound doesn't matter. I can just swoop across this to my heart's content, and he'll never hear me. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Cold out tonight. 
Let's wait for him to come back. Is he coming? Yes, he's coming. So let's demonstrate the AI's lack of hearing. Yeah, look at this. Damned Baron, damned merchants. Doesn't even matter. It's... That one change makes this game so much easier, it's not even funny. In the original Thieves, this level would be a nightmare, simply because of the hard floor. But in this one? Not so much, it's actually pretty easy. And again, this is on master difficulty, this is the highest difficulty. And sound is practically irrelevant. It's... weird, I don't like that they've done that. It... again, it's part of their overall philosophy of simplifying the game. And simplifying can be good. You know, sometimes things are just too damn complicated. Not the gloom. But sometimes simplifying is bad. And it makes it so you have less to consider, and so your solutions are... And, and what you do in the game and how you interact with it are just less interesting, and that is certainly the case here. There's just less to worry about. Which makes it less interesting to play. So this is actually an example of one of the best custom missions in the game, in my opinion. It's actually a fairly big environment, it's pretty cool, it's got cameras. I actually really enjoyed playing it, but... Another problem that this game has is that a lot of the optional missions are really dull. At first, I played all of the missions, all of the optional missions. I did every single one of them when I was playing through it. But it just started to wear me down. It started to get really dull. And I ended up just doing the major client missions. You know, the big ones that seemed like the most fun, but even those were kind of dull. Let me, uh, let me demonstrate one of the worst client missions. Alright, here we go. Client job, happy medium. This is one of the less interesting client missions. The quality of the missions is really just completely hit or miss. Come on then, let's see it. See what now? The Oracle, you drunk bastard. Oh. Well, I didn't bring it with me, did I? Man should never do his business in the, you know, the hands he eats with. It's stashed away, nice and safe. Oh, it's two grave holes. I'll give you till the clock tower strikes to bring it here. Otherwise, find another mug to pawn your hey, stuff onto. No need to kick up a fog about it. I'll be on my way. Lenny. Not the first time I've stolen from the master drunk. I'll make it another for the road. You could, you could see some wonderful animation glitches there. You might think that's a completely irrelevant conversation that you can just skip past, right? Just a little bit of world building. No. This in almost this entire client mission is all about waiting for stuff to happen. So I need to follow him. He's a drunkard. He can't even open the gate. So I need to open it for him. Is anyone listening? I, oh, I can't play. make a barracks head or tail. Maybe I'll sneak tonight. And then you need to follow him as he agonizingly slowly walks. Remain undetected. Keep Lenny moving to reach his hideout. This is the mission. You have to just wait behind him. Boys! It's me! Oh, joy. And he gets distracted by stuff, so you have to do stuff to keep him moving. <laughs> such as this. The old crew, back together. Ah! What's going on? My friggin' pipe's on fire. I wanted a flame, not the apocalypse. It must have been that pickled idiot. Red Jenny herself would ride the other friggin' way if she saw him coming. Well, you boys seem kind of busy. Got no time for poor old Lenny. What? I'll just be on my way. And that's the mission. That is the mission. It's not very thief-like, is it? You just wait. You wait and you do the one thing that you have to do to progress it. The bloom. Me, I never had anything except for black toes. 
Doc, I says. Put your knife away. They don't stick any worse than normal. <laughs> sure enough, they came off by themselves. Didn't cost a penny. It's kind of amusing, but it's a total waste of time. It just... It just sucks. You're just waiting and there's only one way to solve these situations. There's no... Uh, you can't be clever. Won't you let down your hosey? Bree. Piss off, Lenny. What do you say, Rosie? <coughs> Wanna go around? Not even if his royal topness himself made it law. I can't pay right now, but put it on the tap. You know I'm good for it. Stick an eel down your pants, they're not choosy. Ah, who's that next to you, your sister? We could all get introduced. Get off, will you, Lenny? You're scaring away my real customers. And that's it. Come on. How's about it? <clears throat> and that, what yeah. About now? That's it. Now. Rosie. And you have to do this to progress it. <laughs> Where, where'd she go? Rosie! If you wanted me to go, you could have just kicked me in the hammers like It's you unbelievably dull. I mean, it's kind of funny, but Lenny! Lenny! again, all you have to do Some is just wait. Extra for what I'm going to do to just you wait behind him. Mess. You can't use your own cleverness to try to find a unique pathway through. No, you just friggin' wait <laughs> and Someone's press the button. The gate. Turn the thing. Lock the friggin' gate. Right. Maybe I lock the friggin' gate. And that's it. Well, I can't climb it on these shoes. Might tear my hammer pouch. And I think that about sums up the game. Turn off the voice, because that's annoying the hell out of me. <sighs> that's about it. This... The, the difference between the bank heist and this... Happy medium mission, I think demonstrates the wide range of quality that you see in this game. Sometimes it's pretty, you know, it's really good. Like the bank heist mission is a lot of fun. It's a pretty complex map. It's really cool. It's, it's big. It's unique. And then you have ones like this, which are just horrible. Just horrible wastes of time. And this entire thing might as well just be a freaking cutscene, practically. It's basically all you're doing. Go here, turn the thing, wait for the stupid drunk to slowly shamble about. Do more things. Just The quality of... The gameplay in this game is just all over the place. It really is. And this game has a lot of technical issues, too. Even though it runs really well, it just... There's a lot of ways in which it just seems unfinished. You saw the animation glitches from that one guy at the beginning of this mission, just glitching around. That's really common. That happens all the time. I had one section in the game where... Everybody kept having the same conversation, the exact same conversation for like a half hour straight in multiple parts of the city. I'm not kidding. Everybody was talking about, what was it, Polly Adler, the Doc Frock? Everybody was having the same conversation again and again and again and again and again and again. It was horrible. Another time in the game, I saw, I saw NPCs spawning in. Literally just spawning in to populate the environment. It was during an elevator ride. It... Like, it just seems unfinished in some ways. It's got some horrible, weird technical issues, especially with the audio. Like, the conversation happening, happening again and again. When it comes to the audio, that's... pretty commonplace. I've had audio in cutscenes that's just way too quiet for no reason whatsoever. And then the next cutscene I watch will be perfectly fine. I've had repeating audio like that. I've had audio that clips off before they're actually finished speaking. Just lots of weird issues like that. And the way you're just pushed down a linear path and just made to wait in this client mission is, I think, really indicative of the overall problem of this game. And that's that it's forgettable. Despite the good things I said about it, 
you know, the awesome body awareness that they've done, the the amazing graphics, how well it runs and how well it's optimized. You know, they've done a great job with that, but uh, sadly, it's still forgettable. It really is. They've simplified it way too much. To the point where it's not really interesting to play. I I've had a decent amount of fun with it. Again, more towards the center. The beginning is terrible and the end. Well, the problem with the end is just that... It focuses on the story. And like I mentioned, the story is terrible. And since it's... Of course, it's trying to... You know, the three-act structure, it's getting to the end of the last act, it tries to tie everything up, which means the game becomes a lot more linear. So, when you have a very linear game that's focusing on the story that's already terrible, the ending just naturally becomes terrible. So that's the problem with that. So the beginning sucks, the end sucks, and the middle part is... It's a decent amount of fun, but you have issues like this mission, and the sort of de design philosophy in this mission that you see throughout the entire game. The tendency to oversimplify things to the point where they're not even interesting to interact with anymore. The rope arrows. Not interesting. They, they just, they ruined it. Sound is only a minor consideration, whereas before it was a major one. So sound isn't really something you often need to consider very much. It's become uninteresting and bland. Even the environment even though it's really well detailed, once again, it's bland. I mean, the original Thieves, all of them, had they had some crazy stuff going on. You had the Pagans, you had the Hammerites, you had freaking ghosts. <laughs> I mean, they were kind of crazy. They were a bit wacky. And it made the environments and the world interesting. Whereas this one is almost exclusively just bland. Bland gameplay and a bland storyline. It's just... It's just bland. It's forgettable. And that's a shame. That makes me really sad. I don't think this game is going to be remembered for very long, which... It's a shame. So yeah, I think that sums it up pretty well. It's a mess of a game. It's a decent amount of fun towards the center, but... It's just pretty forgettable. And a thief game a thief game really should not be forgettable. Oh well. Well, here's to hoping that... The next thief game, if there is one... Is... Actually pretty damn good. Hopefully this won't be the last we'll see of the Thief franchise. Because I think there's still a lot of life left in it. A lot more to explore.